Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Obama left Trump a revolting surprise in the White House, it's so gross. The liberal biased mainstream media has been attempting to get regular Americans to turn against Republican President Donald Trump by implying that he is somehow an out of touch, rich elitist who considers living inside the White House to not be up to his billionaire stands. In a recent smear feature in Golf magazine, the journalist claimed that President Trump actually referred to the White House as a real dump. Trump has forcefully denied that he made that statement, and numerous informed insiders including Newt Gingrich have backed Trump up. However, what the journalist falsely claimed Trump said might actually be accurate about the White House, thanks to former President Barack Obama. According to a report from Freedom Daily, President Obama was negligent about upkeep in the mansion he occupied for eight years at taxpayers' expensive. He deferred so much maintenance on the White House that it ended up getting infested with roaches," said Towson University political science professor Martha Joint Kumar about her encounter with roaches in the White House while Obama was president, it was the size of a small drone. I wanted to bag it so that the GSA would know what kind of issue we had. I chased it. But it got away behind some wiring. Former First Lady Michelle Obama once referred to the White House as a prison, a fact that the mainstream media has conveniently forgotten. Do you think it's disgusting that Obama ran the White House down to the ground like this? Media leaks President Trump's speech with Mexican president and spread dangerous lie, here's the truth. The media has leaked the transcript of a private conversation between President Trump and the Mexican president Enrique Peña Nieto. The call happened on January 27. The media has taken one line out of context that makes it sound like he doesn't care about the wall. Believe it or not, this is the least important thing that we are talking about, but politically this might be the most important talk about, said Trump. CNN reported this gleefully out of context. However, when you actually listen to the full conversation he was talking about the dollar value of the wall, not the wall itself. He pushed the Nieto very hard for him to pay the construction of the wall. My people stand up and say, Mexico will pay for the wall and your people probably say something in a similar but slightly different language. But the fact is we are both in a little bit of a political bind because I have to have Mexico pay for the wall, I have to, said President Trump. I have been talking about it for a two-year period, and the reason I say they are going to pay for the wall is because Mexico has made a fortune out of the stupidity of U.S. trade representatives," said President Trump. Because you and I are both at a point now where we are both saying we are not to pay for the wall. From a political standpoint, that is what we will say. We cannot say that anymore because if you are going to say that Mexico is not going to pay for the wall. Then I do not want to meet with you guys anymore because I cannot live with that," said President Trump. Not exactly what CNN is reporting. Talcum X just said Kaepernick not getting hired again is unchristian. The racist Black Lives Matter group has no shortage of obnoxious people among its members and supporters, but the very worst one just might be New York Post writer Sean King. Conspicuously light-skinned self-proclaimed African-American King recently went on a tirade and misused scripture to say why he thinks it's unchristian that former San Francisco 49ers backup quarterback Colin Kaepernick remains unemployed. Wrote Sean, regarding the decision of the Baltimore Ravens not to hire Kaepernick, and I hope the Ravens team owners and front office members pray about this decision because what teams are doing to Kaepernick, effectively banning him from the league because he spoke out against police brutality, is fundamentally unchristian. To be clear, I didn't introduce Faith into this conversation, the Ravens did. So let me press this case a bit further. He continued, 
what it appears this is going to come down to is whether or not the ravens pray to the god of Donald Trump or the god of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Trump's god, and the followers of Trump's god, believe Trump is a man of great faith who is actually bringing Jesus back to the White House. Trump's god and the followers of Trump's god appear to hate immigrants and refugees. King was only getting started. He added in his wannabe sermon, Trump has already spoken very clearly about his disdain for Colin Kaepernick and his love of police brutality. If Trump's God feels the same way, then surely he'll tell the Ravens' owner to shun Colin Kaepernick. That would absolutely be the white, conservative Christian thing to do. He also said that supporters of Trump are confusing Christianity with a peculiar version of patriotic, partisan white supremacy. That's actually not new, but drove the KKK. It drove slavery and colonialism. It drove plantations and lynchings. It drove Donald Trump into the White House. Do you think this confused racist has any business talking about Christianity? Eric Bowling slammed Trump advisor Miller on one huge issue, do you agree with him? Stephen Miller, who serves as an advisor to President Donald Trump, got a great deal of press attention for the heated way in which he sparred with disrespectful liberal CNN reporter Jim Acosta during a recent White House press briefing. Many people were happy to see the way in which Miller aggressively handled this reporter's allegations about President Trump's new immigration plan. Others, however, were less than pleased with the manner in which Miller conducted himself. Opined ex-Republican Morning Joe host Joe Scarborough about Miller's press briefing performance, Oh my God! It was so much worse than I ever thought. He added, and seriously, the White House has got to stop embarrassing themselves by putting this guy on, and commented that it was horrendous and an embarrassment and made Susan Rice the Sunday after Benghazi look smooth. Fox News host Eric Bowling surprisingly agreed with Scarborough about Miller's performance. Commented Bowling about Miller, don't put that guy in front of the cameras again. He explained that communications is not Stephen's strength, despite being a great policy advisor. Added Eric on Fox News specialists about the optics with Trump's latest policy plan, and the message gets stepped on because everyone is going to play that interchange with Acosta instead of talking about how great this immigration policy is. They really have to fix their communications department. Is Eric correct about Miller's performance? Michael Moore now wants a big lip celeb to run for president in 2020, she'd be horrible. In predictable fashion, corpulent progressive Michael Moore has been attempting to stay in the limelight by trashing President Donald Trump together with other multimillionaire celebrities like Meryl Streep and George Clooney. The propaganda filmmaker evidently believes that the best way for the Democratic Party to defeat Republican incumbent Trump in the 2020 is to run one of his liberal celebrity friends against him. In a recent interview, Moore proclaimed that he wants hyper-wealthy Oprah Winfrey to run on the Democratic ticket said more to the hosts of The View, giving his advice on how the Democratic Party can beat Trump. First of all, don't go to the right. You don't need to convince Trump voters. We already have the majority. Let's get the majority in these electoral college states. Rebuked conservative Jedediah Bila, on that note, you talked about celebrities and you have suggested that perhaps on the left they should run some big-name celebrities. My question for you is though if they do that those celebrities once they get in office, they have to govern, they have to lead. Have we not seen that experience, whether it's serious business experience or serious governmental experience, experience matters. Do you still feel the same way now that you have seen Trump? Replied Blowhard Moore, yes because the celebrities on our side, first of all, are smart. He added who wouldn't vote for Tom Hanks for President of the United States. Kamunde or Oprah, Oprah. Shot back Bila, I'll tell you who. Many Americans feel that those celebrities are out of touch. I'll tell you a lot of people would say they don't understand my needs. Shouted Moore, cutting her off, wrong. We're on TV right now. 
Americans love celebrities. He continued later, we're going to win with Oprah. Do you think Moore is out of touch?